Hi, Bruce the Accounting Guy here today, and today we're covering the chapter on special journals. Now, when it comes to the special journals, I've given you homework where you're actually going to use all these journals, but on the exam, you're not going to have to use or post or, or, or move anything into the special journals at all. All you're going to really need to know is, is I'll give you a list, just like you do have for one of the homework problems, <coughs> of a number of transactions and all you really need to know is what journal does that transaction go into. Now up to this point in time the only thing that we have been using is of course the general journal. The general journal has been the place where we've made all of our entries but in reality and in the real world which is I guess reality to some of us you do need to know how to use these special journals because that's where all the activity goes. Very little really goes into a general journal. Now we have four special journals besides that general journal, so there's a total of five that we use. So let's go over each one. All I really want to do is give you a summation of what goes into each one. As far as the usage again, I do give you a homework problem or two just so you can see how it works and you have the answers, but you just need to know what goes in each. So let's take a look at two journals right now that both have the title cash. The first one is the cash receipts journal and it's used for all cash received including cash sales. So all you, gotta, all you have to really do is remember if it's cash, it can only go into one of two journals. The first journal it can go into is cash coming in. If cash is coming into this place at all, and we have cash coming into the business at all, it's always recorded in the cash receipts journal. And that's all you really need to remember about the cash receipts journal. Cash coming in, I don't care. If it was for rent, I don't care if it was for a sale, I don't care if it was a refund on something, it has to go into the cash receipts journal. And in your text, they give you plenty of examples of how that's done. The second cash that you would deal with would be exactly the opposite, and that would be the cash payments journal. And it's used for all cash paid, including cash purchases. So we would use the cash payments journal whenever cash is going out the door. So we have two journals that handle cash. We have the cash receipts and we have the cash payments. And so whenever cash is involved at all, I don't care what it is for, it's either coming in, cash receipts journal, or it's either going out, cash payments journal. So those are our two journals that will take care of any kind of cash transaction we have. Now let's go to another set of journals. I'm going to jump back over here and we're going to go to two journals that are very specific journals and they handle non-cash transactions. If we use the word cash at all, they don't go in these journals because they don't have the word cash. Now, <clears throat> And yes, that includes Johnny Cash would go into one of those journals. Now, we're going to go over to this journal called Purchases Journal. Okay? And on the Purchases Journal, it's for purchases. But it's only for purchases. As you can see down here, I've got these two journals together on account. Because if you purchase something on account, you're not using cash. So therefore, it would be purchases only on account, and that's the only time. Now, when you go to pay for those purchases, it doesn't affect this journal because you're paying. And of course, when you're paying again, you're using cash, and that's cash going out, and that would therefore have to be your cash payments journal. So again, this journal is only for purchases and on account. We jump over to the second journal. It's called the sales journal. Now we're making sales. But notice it says sales used, what? All sales of merchandise, keyword, on account. Again, we only use this journal if we're making a sale on account. If we're collecting money from the sale, from a sale, again, money coming in is cash coming in. That's a cash receipt. The only time we would use this journal is on account. When we make a sale on account, when we make a purchase on account. Otherwise, we're going to be in the other two journals. So that covers the four special journals. And the last journal we have is the general journal. Now, the general journal pretty much is what is called the catch-all account. It, if, if you do not have cash receipts, you do not have cash payments, you do not have a purchase on account or a sales on account, use the general journal. So you're going to go, what the heck's it used for? Well, it's a special journal, but basically it's used for just a number of things. Number one, 
as it says here, it's for correcting adjustments. Maybe you put something in a journal, but you misclassified it. You don't go back and correct it in that journal. You go back and make a journal entry in the general journal and correct it here. It's for the closing entries. You know we learned those four closing entries. Those four closing entries would also go in here. And then it also involves, if you do your reading, sales returns and allowances. Any kind of sales returns or allowance would be recorded in here. So the general journal is a catch-all. Again, there's five special journals. All you really need to know when it comes to those five special journals is which journal to use. Okay? If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I will see you again real soon.